Full disclaimer, I'm totally gonna rant in this video, so I'm apologizing for that, but if this helps one person, great, mission accomplished. I have to talk about this tool. I just went and dropped my van stall off because I, like an idiot, decided that I would open it up myself. Uh, I service all my own reels, service everything. Van stall is a different breed. Unless you know what you're doing, and I'll be the first one to admit, I do not know what I'm doing. Don't open them up. Bring them to a professional. I highly recommend Saltwater Edge. Send them out, get them serviced by a professional. They are a different kind of reel. They're 100% sealed. So for that reason, once you crack open the case, you're in trouble if you don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. It's at the service center and it's being serviced. Those guys are awesome. If you don't know Saltwater Edge, they are one of the biggest surf casting stores around. Go there, have them work on your reels. I haven't done mine in like three or four years, so it was time. Uh, but while I was there, the meaning of this video is, I took a look around, I was walking around, I was getting excited and I saw all the tools, the pliers, the boga grips, all the lures, rods, reels, all that stuff. Got me thinking, there is one tool in this bag that I use all the time that is one of the most important tools that I see so many people either not know about or neglect. And it is such an important tool that I have to make a video about this and say, look, if you don't have one of these, buy one, buy one. Use it early and often. And you might be thinking, hmm, I wonder what he's gonna talk about. Is it gonna be a sweet set of pliers? No, maybe it's an awesome knife. Maybe it's split ring pliers. It's gotta be the boga. Maybe it's a knot puller, line cutter, little glow stick that you, no, none of them. Mm -mm. Number one tool that majority of people skip. The hook file. I, but before you, before you leave, hear me out. This hook file is one of the most important tools in anyone's surf bag. And if you don't have one, shame on you. You need to get one immediately. I'm leaving a link down below where you can buy one. I think it's this exact one. I'm not 100% sure. I found this one and I was super pumped when I was walking along the beach and found this. So like I have a whole bunch of other ones, but this is the one that I like to use just because I found it. So I think it's awesome. This tool I use all the time. If I am surf casting, if I am surf casting and I get into a school of fish, I'm not talking about like the one off where like it's a rough day and you catch one or two and you know what I mean? No, I'm talking like I'm hammering them, right? And there is a giant pot of fish and I'm going through them. If I'm using the same lure over and over and over again, and I'm going for that bigger fish, I wanna catch a bigger class of fish, I need, I need to use a file. It's imperative. And the reason is because these hooks dull. Now, what I'm about to say, I'm gonna be the first one to tell you, I did not believe. I just didn't think it was that big of a deal. Everybody always says the importance of sharpening your hooks. You need to sharpen your hooks. You need to keep sharp hooks. For crying out loud, like I always thought like, yeah, they're pointy, they're sharp. I mean, they're, you know, if I feel them, they're sharp. What you That's not what I'm talking about. When you get into a bigger class of fish, I'm saying like, I'll stay conservative and say 25 pounds, but really I'm talking like the 30, the 40, the 50s. Those, that class of fish, their mouths, the inside of their mouths, they basically have a coating of like a cartilage. It's like bone. And I'm talking, it's like plating. And it is so, so, so hard that to bury a hook inside of that plating is incredibly difficult the bigger the fish is. Big fish. What you wanna do is I, or what I do, I wanna shift the advantage, whatever and however small that advantage might be, I wanna shift it into my corner. I wanna keep it out of the fish's corner and I wanna shift it into mine. How many times have you ever heard, I had the biggest fish of my life and I lost them because of X, Y, Z. Majority of the time, it's leader, it's the lure, it's the hook broke, all of those things. 
I want to limit that at all stages of the game. Now, I'm talking just striper fishing from the surf. So if I catch, if I hook into a big fish, I want, I do not want to have any shred of a doubt in my gear ever. At some point, there's going to be a point where you are going to make a mental shift in your surf casting or your fishing career, let's say, or your hobby. You're going to make a shift from catching small fish and thinking that that is the greatest thing in the world to I want to catch a bigger fish. And when that shift happens, you need to shift everything. Your tactics, how you fish, your gear. Your gear needs to take a shift. You need to start going and thinking of the worst case scenario at every point. And the real way that this happens the fastest is one, you either start right from the beginning or two, you lose one. And when you lose one, you start to obsess. You start to get crazy over your gear, over your tactics, over your, your, your spots, locations. You start getting a little obsessed. One of the biggest things is how sharp my hooks are. And if you're not obsessed about it, you are going to lose fish. I do not care, you'll lose them. So this thing is like, it's like a $20 file. Buy one and use it early and often. I use it if I know I'm in a good class of fish, or if I know that there's a good class of fish around, I am using it constantly. Cause I know I can bury the hook into a 20 pound fish's jaw, no problem. 40 pounds, 50 pounds, I need that thing razor. I mean, razor sharp. There's not even a question. I want that thing to bury in there. How many times have you ever caught a fish and you have said the line, oh, he was barely hooked or the lure just popped right out of his mouth when I picked him up. When I got him on the boga, when I got it, when I got his jaws, the lure just popped out of his mouth. Yes, that's great, but we're talking trophy fish here. Trophy fish. When I catch that trophy fish and I have that thing come up and I grab him, I want to struggle with getting him unhooked. I'm not talking about hurting the fish, right? I don't want to gut I don't want to gut hook him. I'm talking I want to bury that hook into the plating of his mouth so that I have no doubt that I will not lose the fish. I want to set the hook to the moon and I want to know that once I hook him, job's done, it's over. I just have to do a good job fighting him and reel him in. To do that, the gear needs to be perfect. The hooks need to be sharp. And in order to have them sharp, you got to file them. And I'm telling you, this is something that I do in between each fish, every other fish, every couple of fish, I get obsessive. If I hook a good one, boom, file's coming out. I hit the thing real quick, no problem. And then I start fishing again. I use this thing all the time. And believe me, I know, I sound crazy, I sound obsessive. If this helped one person to bury a hook and land a fish that you considered a trophy, great job done moving on everything changes when the fish gets bigger fact that's why tuna fishermen i mean when you talk about tuna it is a whole nother ball game when it comes to gear oh uh, they see their eyes are so big they see so if you have a fingerprint on your leader you got a problem i'm not talking about that crazy for for striped bass you don't have to go that nuts but when it comes to hooks their mouths are like, they're like rock. It's like, it's like armor in there. You need to be able to bury the hook and having a subpar sharpened hook ain't gonna do it when it comes to bigger fish. So like, if I looked at these hooks, this is from last season. So I haven't done any maintenance on my surf bag yet. This is a rusted hook. That's a rusted hook. This, I can, I can, not gonna cut it. So if you are just like pulling out your surf bag and going out for a time, the last thing you want to do is even get lucky on a big fish. You know what I mean? Pull out a surf bag from last year, not touch any of your gear and go toss it out. That, ugh, that makes me just, mm, don't do it. Don't do it. Check your gear. I'm not so much talking about like, I'm going to swap all my hooks before the season. I'm swapping everything. Everything gets swapped. Everything's brand new. All my split rings, everything. I check everything. I make sure that we're all hundred percent. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you take a brand new lure. I'm talking, you take a brand spanking new lure. These are brand spanking new hooks. Brent, never been fish, never been in the water, nothing. This is good to go goes in the bag i'm talking i go and i fish that lure now and i catch a couple fish right 
two fish, three fish, maybe even if I didn't catch any fish and I just raked it through the weeds a bunch for a whole day, it hits the rocks, it hits the jetty, right? Like the thing gets dinged up. It's a brand new lure, never caught a fish. The hooks are not sharp, they need to be sharpened. Take your file, hit it a couple times, you know what I mean? Maybe I've hit the rocks, boom, whack it a couple times, give it a little, you know, a little. File them up, get them extra razor sharp. You just want to hit it a little bit. You know, you'll see the shine. Just dress it up real quick. And that's it. That's all you got to do. This right here, unsharpened hook. I can actually take my finger and just run it across it. Now this is one that I sharpened. This one is freshly sharpened. If I try to, you can actually, it cuts right into my finger. This one does not. The reason I'm this obsessive is because if by chance that trophy make the paper fish is out there and he bites my lure, I want to know without a shred of a doubt, my hooks were sharp and I've got the advantage when it comes to sharpened hooks. That's what I'm talking about. So if you ever read, keep your hooks sharp, I'm talking be obsessive over it. And the only way to be obsessive over it is to file them. This is by far my most important tool that I use probably, I use it a lot. You know what I mean? I use this file a lot. Keep your hooks sharp. It's a very small investment that could pay off big time when it comes to fishing for trophy fish. I'm gonna leave a link to this in my description below. It's an Amazon link, go on, buy one. They work awesome. Just keep them dressed, you know what I mean? Keep a conscious eye on it and it will make you feel better. When you hook into a big one, you'll feel better. When you set the hook, you'll feel better. You'll say, yep, I know for a fact that if I lose them, it has nothing to do with the hooks. The hook is what hooks them. You have got to be 100% on board when it comes to this stuff. So, do yourself a favor, buy a file, keep it in the bag, and use it. Guys, if you like this content, please hit that subscribe button, comment down below. Let me know if you're using files. You know what I mean? Do you file your hooks? When do you file your hooks? Or am I just an obsessive crazy person that literally takes this to a 10th degree? As always, thanks so much guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.